the third presentation, uh, the title is uh, the characterization of the um, isotropic uh, tensor response of uh, UHP fiber reinforced concrete uh, com 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 cementitious composites uh, by the Mr. Parente. Thank you very much for introducing me um, and good morning, dear participants. Um, I will start my presentation by giving you a quick overview of my thesis and how this work fits on it. So, as said, I'm committed to find new solutions for bridges making use of UHPFRC and HPFRC. UHPFRC is ultra high performance fiber reinforced cement issues composite, and HPFRC is high performance fiber reinforcement fiber reinforcement issues composites. They differ in the uh, strength grade. grade. So for that, I will need to develop some theoretical models to simulate the behavior of reinforced UHP FRC in one dimension, then try to apply it to, for instance, the study of hybrid reinforced concrete and reinforced UHP FRC um, sections, and extend the model to a bidimensional situation where I can study cracked membrane elements, for instance, and then finally apply it to or implement it into finite element analysis. So I can perform uh, design and analysis of bridges, making use of these materials. This presentation that I'm about to present to you particularly um, is referred to a very first step of my thesis work. And it, is, uh, it was intended to validate and um, validate the characterization and simulation of UHPFRC alone without steel reinforcement. So after the introduction, I will tell you a little bit about the tensile behavior of UHPFRC and how I model it. I will tell you about the experimental program and numerical simulations. I will compare the results for validation and also uh, will give you some conclusions at the end. UHPFRC is known by its high compressive strength and also high tensile strength mainly due to its high compact matrix, as you can see in this picture when compared to conventional concrete, and also because of the presence of steel fibers. The post-cracking tensile uh, behavior particularly is very interesting to study and very complex, and it depends uh, on fibers orientation, fibers content, and fibers geometry. All these parameters can be lumped into a single parameter called fiber structure parameter, here represented by lambda. And it is found uh, in the past in previous works that is well correlated with some mechanical properties concerning the post-cracking behavior. The existing non-destructive tests uh, allow us already to have a good estimate of fiber orientation and fiber content. Surrogate models allow us to Making you, by making use of this lambda estimates uh, mechanical properties, which can be later used to uh, draw tensile constitutive laws, which can then be implemented in structural analysis to perform analysis of these materials. Okay, this is the procedure that I'm proposing, and that requires experimental validation, which was also carried out and will be presented to you as well. The tensile behavior of UHPFRC um, can be divided into types, uh, major types, uh, strength softening when the post-cracking strength is lower than the, the limit of elasticity, and uh, strain hardening when the post-cracking strength is higher than the limit of elasticity. How, does, uh, how do I model these, these different behaviors? Uh, I propose these simplified multilinear multi functions for strain hardening and for strain softening, okay? Um, and they depend on some mechanical properties which can be found by means of surrogate models already developed uh, in previous works. Uh, and these surrogate models allow taking into account the directionally dependent values of cracking strength, post-cracking strength, and also the strain at the onset of softening. Um, as function of the directional variation of fiber structure parameter. Basically, the surrogate models, these continuous solid lines, uh, are simply simple equations that reproduce the trends observed either experimentally, as you can see these dots, uh, and also observed by modeling 
the maximum mechanical behavior of this material, as you can see by these dashed lines. So, and this, these values in this table are the mechanical, uh, the model parameters for the surrogate model uh, and for the, the mixture used in my, in my studies. The experimental program is divided in five main stages. The first, mix, mixture and casting. The mixture is developed by our research group um, and we use steel fibers with nine millimeters length and also 12 millimeters length with equal proportions. The casting was carried out uh, in horizontal molds from a constant pouring position and also with the aid of a vibrating table to help the flow of this very viscous material. Uh, so viscous that unfortunately it resulted in some uh, rough surf, uh, uh, some rough of the top surface of the casting and consequently in some variation of the plate thickness. I will come back to that later. When the plate solidified, um, uh, we performed non-destructive tests by means of the measurement of the inductance of the mag magnetic circuits uh, comprising this U-shaped right inductor, the matrix and the steel fibers embedded in there. We performed the, the measurements in the bottom surface, the smoother one and of the slab uh, at each intersection of these 50 by 50 millimeters grids. And at each intersection, we performed three measurements at perpendicular directions and one uh, in the between at 45 degrees. Because steel fibers are the only ferromagnetic phase of the composite, um, the, the fiber volume and the fiber orientation factor could be estimated um, by these correlations, which were found uh, uh, elsewhere. Um, and knowing, knowing them, the fiber content and the fiber uh, orientation factor, we can draw or plot these, these maps. This first map shows the direction preferential, uh, the, the direction of preferential orientation of steel fibers uh, by means of ellipses, which uh, could be drawn uh, by a tensorial approximation of uh, the fiber orientation factor. And this map here show, gives us a clear sense of the fiber distri content distribution throughout the slab. Okay. Uh, with, with the fiber orientation factor, we can also estimate the fiber efficiency factor by means of this correlation, also proposed and validated uh, in this work. And knowing all these parameters and the fiber geometry, um, we can find fiber structure parameter, which can be then correlated with some mechanical properties with the surrogate models, for instance, post-cracking strength, which allow us um, to decide about the plates layout uh, for cutting out so in such a way that we have different post-cracking um, strengths being tested in order to validate our model for different uh, structural behaviors. The four-point bending test uh, was carried out according to the French norm for the characterization of these materials, uh, meaning that um, we provided these static conditions to the plates, we measured the deflection at mid-span in both sides of the plates and then average them. Uh, we apply the constant displacement rate um, of 0 0.25 millimeters per minute. And here we have the results of the low deformation behavior of the plates tested. Uh, we have a great variability, which is good to validate our model for different circumstances. Uh, particular attention to the linear elastic phase where we notice some some um, scatter on the bending stiffness, uh, not only due to the differences on the plate width, due to the cutting process, but mainly due to the roughness of the, to the, the top surface of the casting, as I told you before. Um, so we used, even though there is some variability of the thickness, we used um, a constant thickness for the numerical analysis, and it was estimated by matching the bending stiffness of the, the experimental curves, okay? Here we have the crack pattern, the, the critical cracks that led the, that cover the failure of the plates. The numerical simulations were carried out with rectangular brick elements, uh, total strain rotating crack model 
was used with multilinear tensile behavior. Each block um, of each plate uh, was modeled with different tensile laws according to the NDT measurements in each intersection of that 50 by 50 millimeters crease. So this way we could have in take into account the variability of fiber content throughout all the plates and also the fiber orientation. Uh, we assume constant um, tensile behavior within each of these blocks. We could estimate the tensile behavior in every direction thanks to the um, uh, the serial approximation of fiber orientation factor, but in fact we only need it in the longitudinal direction because the cracks are expected to open in that direction as well. And then we used an incremental iterative procedure to solve the numerical problem. Here we have uh, the results, um, the comparison between low deformation behavior of the experimental and the numerical results and also the comparison between crack patterns. Uh, a good match, a very good match was observed in plate one for load deformation and also plate three and nine. There, plate seven and eight yielded bad results, either in loads, peak load and also ductility at peak load. There is a plates five, four, five, six and two yielded satisfactory results since that numeric analysis could capture the, the trends on, on the behavior um, due to fiber variability, either in content and orientation. Uh, nevertheless, there is a, a, an overestimation of the peak load in these situations, and also the strain, no, no not the strain, but the deflection at mid-span also at peak loads is slightly overestimated in these situations. The position of the critical crack leading to failure uh, is well predicted only in plate one, three, and five. Possible reasons influencing the, um, the quality of the results are the simplifications inherent to the characterization methods, namely the non-structed test and the correlations with, um, with uh, fiber content and fiber orientation factor. Also, uh, human error in the NDT measurements. Uh, also, simplifications uh, of the surrogate models where we use simplified functions. And mainly, the, the, the main reason, in my opinion, is also the constant thickness of the plate, which is being assumed in the numerical analysis, because, in fact, there is some roughness on the top surface of the plates, uh, meaning that there is thicker and thinner sections um, than the average thickness being used. And the thinner section might be governing the failure in some cases, and that might justify the overestimation of the numerical model where the, the average, let's say, the average thickness uh, is typically thicker than the, the thinnest section of the plates. So still uh, the significant variability of the structural response uh, of the different plates sawn from the same slab um, could be reproduced with reasonable agreement in these cases, with exception of plate seven and eight, and we are satisfied with them. So some conclusions, um, a new method to perform structural analysis on UHPFRC structures is presented. Uh, the underlying tensile characterization process is based on the distribution of uh, um, orientation and volume of the steel fibers. The proposed may method makes it possible to achieve similar trends in structural response uh, of those observed in the experimental tests. And this, the proposed method also can be employed to perform improved assessment of the post-cracking tensile behavior of thin elements without requiring destructive characterization tests. For future developments uh, and taking into account uh, my thesis, uh, I would like to have a general description of the anisotropic tensile response uh, when I don't know beforehand the crack opening direction as I did in these in these cases of these plates. And for that, uh, I need to implement the directional variation of fiber structure parameter in the in a constitutive model for nonlinear structural analysis. I'd like to acknowledge Construct, Feather, Compete 2020, and PDAC for their funding support. Also, these companies 
for their co collaboration and material supply. And finally, to Portuguese Foundation for Science and Technology for provi providing me a PhD scholarship and also Fundação Colust Globenkian for providing uh, a scholarship to my colleague, friend, and also co-author of this work, Aureli C. This was my presentation. Uh, I'm open to question now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Parente. We have discussion time. Uh, please, does any, anybody have a question or comments on his presentation? Can I ask a question? Yes, please. All right. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, so have you checked or measured the actual distribution and volume of fibers in your specimen? No, we didn't. It, it could be done okay. by means of, of image analysis, but no, we we only um, we based ourselves uh, only in the entity measurements, and we didn't confirm that. Mm. that so, so, so you haven't still uh, verified the accuracy of the non-destructive testing method, right? The, the accuracy of the non-destructive test method. I think in this in the case of this work can be um, I think it it can be said that it is accurate because of the yielded final results, meaning that if we have a good structural response based on the characterization of the entities test, it indirectly means uh, that the post cracking TSL behavior is being well characterized by by that by that uh, method. Uh, but I, I think it's still like indirect, you know, justification. So I, I think, I, I'm not sure if it's possible, but probably you may want to check the actual, you know, orientation and volume of steel fibers by splitting the specimen or some other method. I, I'm not sure, but probably your analysis is very, you know, dependent of the estimated orientation and volume of fibers, right? That's right. So maybe... I, I, yeah. I would just like to add that these NDP measurements were developed in previous works and mm -hmm. the correlation between the orientation factor and the volume content was, was performed that way with measurements and then image analysis to correlate the NDP results, the inductance with those, those results from in, um, image analysis, which can give us by stereological studies uh, the fiber content and, and volume, uh, content and orientation, sorry. I see. Thank you. And uh, another question is, uh, do you think uh, you can also evaluate the three-dimensional orientation by using your method? In your no. case, I think it's just a two-dimensional, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you want to like investigate the thick structure, you need three-dimensional orientations of fibers, right? But just right. by attaching the device on the one side, probably I don't think you can evaluate this three dimensional. Do, do you have any ideas on? Yes, um, important. You are right about that. Uh, this method it's not it's not advisable for that situation for three D uh, characterization of the anisotropic behavior of UHPFRC. It mm -hmm. is only this val this is method is valid for thin elements because of the magnetic field is more important very close to that that bright magnetic probe. Um, and yes, there are some um, works being done in our research group in that concern. I'm not really into that, but it involves also the simulation, the numerical simulation of the magnetic field and all of that. And that is one of the goals of, uh, of our research group, also to extend this method to 3D situations. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Bar Barenti. So yes. please, please see the check chat. Then excellent presentation. Thank you very much. What do you think are the parameters that most influence the non, re, the non reproduction of the post peak regime regime in simulations? Thank you. I I don't know what 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 do you mean by non non reproduction. It's because when uh, when you search your simulation, there is never a decrease of the load. What we want to know is what what is you, the post peak behavior of your simulation. Okay, uh, I stopped the analysis uh, at the peak loads for 
for for one one main reason, which is the 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 post peak load is highly influenced by the softening behavior of these materials. Okay, and it is not well characterized still by us. Um, we, the surrogate models uh, employed uh, are mainly to the the strain hardening behavior. We add so we followed some formulas proposed by Phil in his doctoral thesis to find uh, the debonding, the opening, the crack opening for the debonding, and then we follow this formula for the pullout of the seal fibers and the softening behavior. And that is why we didn't uh, focus on the post-peak the post -peak, um, response. I don't know if it was the, the question. Yeah, of it was the question, but it, it could be interesting to, to see what the simulation did after the post. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, it, it wasn't the case. But I could do that. I did that also because it w because it was a, f a very first uh, work that I performed in this for this thesis. I was still getting um, the handle of the software, and I had some trouble in cutting the the, the behavior of the post peak. But now I can do that very well because I was only using um, as I say here. Let me see. Uh, for load lo, uh, convergence, uh, convergence uh, at force norm lower than 1%. And at peak, that is difficult uh, when the, the response becomes horizontal. And I should have used uh, energy norm also to, to get into the post peak yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, easily. That was another reason. But yeah, you're right. So if it is answered the question, I will move to the next one. Yes, other one, please. So How was I was yeah. performed the calibration of the stress deformation laws in order to perform the Diana models. Thank you for the question. So, the stress the strain, the, the stress deformation laws or the stress strain uh, of the, the, the elements was performed based on the surrogate models, uh, which relate the fiber structure parameter, which accounts for fiber orientation and fiber content to find. Uh, the these mechanical properties okay and these mechanical properties are well correlated with this were found to be well correlated by means of these functions with the fiber structure parameter the mechanical properties can be then used to draw these these um, tensile laws okay and then they were implemented in the tensile behavior of rotating crack models Okay, they were implemented in different blocks. Each block uh, was assigned with different material pr properties. Only for the the sorry, some troubles here. Okay, only for the tensile behavior. So each block was assigned with the different fiber structure parameter because each each point of these plates uh, have or the, their behavior is based on different entity measurements which mean that they have different fiber content and fiber orientation. Uh, and that is why it was modeled that way to take into account the variability throughout the, 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 the plates. Of course, there are some simplification here that I didn't mention uh, when justifying the possibilities for bad results is that the, um, this, this tension loss is being assumed in the, um, is being, are being assumed constant in these blocks. But if I increase the, the discretization of the measurements, uh, the, the, the accuracy might increase as well. That's something that should be studied also. And it is being studied right now with a, a 25 by 25 millimeter screen for the um, NDT measurements. And then it will result in smaller blocks, a higher di discretization, and hopefully better results also. So uh, we are looking forward to the finish your re research yeah, in the too. future. Okay. Thank so you. So please, please uh, submit your paper to the our FIB structure concrete. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. O okay. So now we finished our uh, session. Uh, we already have the three uh, presentations. Thank you very much today, and also uh, please enjoy the rest of the presentation. Thank you. I close with our session. Thank you.